Ah, uh, welcome back to the Dream Job Podcast, Episode 6. I'm Mark Iztook. So after a pretty busy fall, I was able to get five Dream Job episodes in the can, but decided to take a bit of a break for the rest of football season. Uh, things were pretty hectic then, but now that the Super Bowl is over, time to get back to podcasting. Uh, fittingly, my guest today is my co-host at the NFL Network. Aaron Coscarelli and I have knocked out something like 120 episodes of of NFL Blitz, which is our daily live streaming show that you can see on Twitter. And I have loved every minute of working with Erin. She is warm, smart, talented, funny. I could not ask for a better co-host. In a short period of time, Erin has built quite a resume with her work seen on ESPN. She's worked for Fox Sports, the Pac-12 Network, uh, NBC Sports Network, and of course, currently on the NFL Network. So I figured she would be a great guest to kick off the second half of this first season. So let's get to it. Starting things off like we do every day. Hey everybody, welcome to NFL Blitz. I'm Marcus Talk. <laughs> I'm Aaron Gus Oh wait, wait, wait. This is the Dream Job <laughs> Podcast, not NFL Blitz. I messed it up. Oh, so close. It's just when you're around me, you think of I NFL feel like Blitz. we're talking about yep. football. Yeah. Um, it is a dream job for a lot of people to talk about football for a living. Was was that when you were little seven year old Aaron Coscarelli running around? the Los Angeles area, was that what you had in your mind is someday I want to talk about the Rams because they're going to be back in Los Angeles. Right. You on an that? NFL Blitz Twitter show exclusively live streamed That's right. Exactly. to NFL Network. You know what's funny? This may come as a huge surprise, but when I was seven, mm-hmm. my dream was to be on the UCLA basketball team, full right scholarship, okay. and then play Heresy. the W. Because you went to SC. NBA heresy, which is yeah. crazy, right? I, I'm surprised I still admit it. And playing the WNBA. And playing the WNBA. Isn't that weird? I am as vertically challenged as it gets. And yet at seven, I thought I could dunk on some hoops. You could have been the Muggsy Bogues yeah. of the WNBA. Do you think I still have a shot? I mean, no, <laughs> no, I don't. Late. No, I don't. I don't think you still have a shot. <laughs> I, I think you maybe have a shot at the Winter Olympics curling, female curling. Is go. that maybe you could try out for have that Have you team. been watching it? There is a guy I saw like the clips on NBC who has the best Mario Brothers mustache and he's curling. He's the dude who I think tweeted at Aaron Rodgers and oh. Aaron Rodgers tweeted him back and they and somebody memed it to make him look like they're. Mario and Luigi. You know, it's funny. I saw a tweet about someone saying, you need to have just average people go yes. on these particular Olympic events just so we can, at home, stop thinking we can actually do it. Because I look at curling and I'm like, I do that every day in my kitchen. Sure. I sweep like a mad woman. No problem. Yeah. You just apply that to the ice. Yes. Add some beer. Add some layers. And the gold medals just come flying out. Bingo. Um, that would be a dream job. Uh, but it, it, I, so I, 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 it's funny given how long we've worked together, I had to do a little internet research to wow. kind of find out all the places you've Where's worked. Where's the part of the charismatic, super awesome bullet points? Cause I don't see that on that, that one sheet. Um, Very I only funny. put, I only put facts on oh, here. So, right, uh, right, so facts. let's list off some facts. Fox Sports West, CSN Bay Area, Pac-12 Network, NBC Sports Network, NFL Network. I mean, that's quite a resume. I did all that. That's, is, that's my resume. Is that kind of hard to believe? It is. And I'm here now. Uh, what was your first job right out of college? First job right out of college. I worked at Eyewitness News Channel 7, working the prompter from midnight to 9 a.m., getting people coffee, getting yelled at. Because you like were a little too fast or too slow on the prompter? Well, I would just get yelled at because the producers, some, not all, some were w- wonderful, but there were a couple that just hated their lives. Maybe they hated mm-hmm. their jobs, but they were just miserable people. And they decided, I'm going to hate you. Yeah, it felt it felt like that. I thought okay. it was personal. But <laughs> no, um, working from midnight to 9 a.m., uh, I worked at Eyewitness News Channel 7. And it was actually a really great experience for me because I think when we're young, we don't really foster what we love until we figure out what we don't love. Mm. So I knew that I enjoyed the aspect of being in a newsroom. I loved that fast pace. I love people, personalities, uh, live breaking news. I just didn't love hard news. Mm-hmm. Um, and then working teleprompter, you would be, uh, you know, in a control room where you're hearing 
bombing this. This kid was mugged or whatever. And it just it was too depressing for me to do it on a daily basis. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, that's why a lot of people won't, won't read the news, yeah. watch the news because they right. feel that way. Right. So where between the WNBA dreams of the seven year old and the Annenberg journalism mm-hmm. student did the light bulb turn on like this is what I want to do? The light bulb never really turned on until while I was in college when I was in Spanish class and someone said, you're talking a lot. You love to talk. Maybe don't do that so much. But also there is an opening. How can I get paid <laughs> yes. to speak? Someone. In, this is not even a joke. I didn't even know I wanted to do this. I just knew I had um, some some particular traits that a, was pretty nice to go hand in hand with this type of career like mm-hmm. I loved to write I loved people I loved stories I was that kid when I was really young that I was asked why okay incessantly har- harassing my parents why this why that um, but some kid in um, college asked me to do USC uh, college football and at the time it was Matt Liner Reggie Bush they were really good so I was the uscfootball.com reporter just asking Ryan Khalil questions, which is cool to see them now. Well, some playing uh, professionally or watching them go on to play professionally. But then I'm like, wow, I would always feel so great getting to know people's stories, the adversity that they face, the challenges that they do. And at such an elite level, like, you know, football or sports, um, because it really is like a sink or swim mentality. You're at the plate, like where I would strike out. Mm hmm. Every time when the pressure's on, you interview these athletes where they thrive in that type of spotlight. I think that's remarkable. So for me, I loved sports growing up, but then Mm -hmm. I also really loved people. And it was just kind of a nice melting pot of the two talents coming together and then figuring out in college that I actually enjoyed it. And this is a job. You can do this because Erin Andrews was not around when I was growing up. Like we didn't know her to look up to. Hmm. Uh, did you come into USC as a freshman with what major? General studies or? Communications. Okay, so you knew something in communications, maybe, but it wasn't. I knew, Mark, that I just didn't want to do math. <laughs> I that was told was, there would be no math. That was how communications was selected. Yeah, no joke. I'm like, I need a calculator wherever I go. They're but, like, you need uh, three hours your freshman year, three hours your sophomore <laughs> year. And you're like, all right, so nine total? Yes. I'm not a math person. Just, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it was as vague as it it got. Actually, I, um, I had tried to get into UCLA, but they were so impacted that I would have had to take sociology. So I had, I was, I applied to do both Mm -hmm. and calm was so impacted at UCLA. I didn't get in under my first major. Otherwise, I would be which is, rooting on the Bruins. Which, right well, now. that's kind of crazy too, because Annenberg is a legit, very well respected journalism program. So and the fact that that was the avenue available yeah, to you. Isn't, and there you go. You figured it out. Like, I may not be doing what I am doing now because UCLA didn't have a, like a sophisticated journalism program. Maybe it does now. But at USC, they had such a, you know, well-funded, sophisticated journalism school. They had a uh, radio station, our own TV station, mm-hmm. Annenberg TV News, that you were able to figure out and, you know, if this is what you wanted to do. So that's what I did. You said before that there wasn't an Aaron Andrews back then. Right. You didn't have that person that you could look at and say, her, her, that's, that's who I want to be. Uh, but was there a job? You know, I want to be the main anchor on Sports Center, maybe Linda Cohn, or I want to be sidelines for an NFL. Yeah. Like, was there some aspirational opportunity that you thought, this is what I want to shoot for? You know, it's funny. Um, I would watch all the time. This sounds so silly, but I would watch Oprah every single day and take with me. Not so- You get a car. Yeah, yeah. You I'm get like, a car. Oh, I get a car. Nice. <clears throat> There was some aspect of what I loved the most about watching Oprah was I felt I could relate to her, right? Hmm. Um, It's one of the things she does so well. She does so well. And that's what I feel like I try at least to bring towards my interviews or uh, in appealing to an audience is that like I'm super self-deprecating. I'm super hopefully relatable. I don't take myself too serious. Mm -hmm. 
And although Oprah is way more sophisticated than me, way more highbrow than I am. Also taller. She's taller. Much than taller. I mean, her hair game, always on point. Yep. Plus, her lubies are nice, too. <laughs> and her bank account. But there was some aspect of, like, I feel like I could sit down with Oprah and be her bestie. So uh, I didn't know that I wanted to do that, but I just knew that I enjoyed that type of um, hosting personality. Mm-hmm. It's funny that you say you think you could sit down with her and be her bestie because on some level that's delusional. Yeah, I know. And right? isn't a little bit of delusion helpful yes. with this kind of work? Probably. Like the fact that you think and, and I mean I I'm 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 half joking here, but like the idea that you do have to at a young age to get these jobs be able to keep yourself calm, cool, and collected mm-hmm. in these situations where I mean, I know for me, I grew up a fan of the Cowboys, Mavericks, Rangers, and Stars, all the local hometown teams. And as a intern in college, I'm getting a chance to go into these locker rooms around these guys that are like my heroes, yeah. my sports heroes. Yeah. And I have to act like I've been there before. No 20-year-old has any business totally being there realistically. However, you got to fake it till you make it. So it feels like maybe that's a component with having to, and not just in this line of work, but any line of work. Yeah, and I I, I I agree with you on the cool, calm, collected, because we are so fortunate with our job. Every single day, we sit in a studio, and we're interviewing Super Bowl champs and, you know— And Hall of Famers. Hall of Famers yeah. and celebrities. I mean, we did that uh, NFL Blitz Honor Award show where every single person on that red carpet was famous in some avenue. And we were just treating them like we were their buds. I mean, and that, I think, is also the appealing part, too, that you're seeing an audience gravitate towards you because you're asking the same curious questions that they would want to know. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, that's the goal. And it's coming off very relatable. You know, like J.B. Smoove got down on the floor and started doing some weird dance. But we were like, I'm kind of into this right now. This makes This is what I want to see. This makes for great TV. I do feel like if you don't. Carpe diem, not to be cliche, mm-hmm. but if you don't seize the day, you you have some of these opportunities and you forget, wait a second, this is this is amazingly cool. Yeah. Because I know, it's right? it's you punch the clock every day, you do it, and you you create a show and you forget. Because I know for me, getting the first job took a year, more than a year, to get the first on what, what was it? It was at the NBC affiliate in Denison, Texas, K10. <laughs> and I'd been sending out resume tapes for a year. And that was the first time I ever really had to work for something that didn't come easily, mm-hmm. getting that first job. Right, because you're gifted in everything. Like, no joke, people at home, he's carpentry uh, expertise. He's great in the kitchen, apparently. Uh, and then everybody at work loves him. Excellent so driver. He's a Very gr- good at parallel parking. Great shoes on the daily, also. Yeah, um, people they yeah. recognize. Yeah. Um, so finding something It's humbling that, that year to wait, you know, to get that right. job. So you forget sometimes what it's like when you do finally get it. Yeah. Uh, and so then I had that job for a couple of years and then moved out here and had to start over from scratch and spent another three or four years clawing, trying to find the jobs that would that would make ends meet. And, and then you, you work. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you work and you you sometimes sure. you're like, oh, wait a second. I get I get to do this. Mm-hmm. I, 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 there's no have to. There's no like this is a get to. Because there's a long line of people exactly that would love to get a chance to do some of the things that uh, we get to do on a regular basis. So I think that's key. What What's the biggest moment for you where you, I, if you had to look back and you had to say, gosh, the 20-year-old me who was at USC would have been blown away that I got a chance to do this? Oh, man. I'm Now I have to rack my brain because there are, like you said, a lot, there, right? there are a lot of moments where you do need to pinch yourself and go, wow, this is so cool. I mean, and it was hosting an honor uh, award show. I'd never done that at that caliber before. I'd always been on the red carpet doing peace interviews, but to mm-hmm. to, to host it, to toss it to people, the uh, adrenaline that you know, I mean, remember we got OBJ to, to he wasn't even supposed to do any interviews yep. and we just got him over because he was very cool and was into it. And um, I mean, that's the most recent that stands out to me because I look back and I'm like, I had so much fun. Like it, yeah. went by, it, it was an hour show and it went by yep. just like that. And it's and, you know, it is tipping my hat off to working with such great people, our, pro- our producers, having you there. You know, it is a collaborative event, but um, you do have to pinch yourself because you're like, wow, this is really, really, really cool. 
I think one of the things I've tried to do uh, with the podcast and one I hope to continue doing is to say, hey, here are some dream jobs that I think you're going to find a lot of people who can look at some of the jobs mm-hmm. that folks have that I've talked to and say, yes, absolutely, that's a dream job. But I think there are a lot of other dream jobs that maybe don't have the same glamour about, around them, but are a dream job for that person, mm-hmm. that they get to do something that they're passionate about every single day, mm-hmm. that they f- feel fulfilled with what they do. So what would you say is the most fulfilling aspect or personally challenging or personally satisfying aspect of the kind of work you do? The most satisfying aspect for me is getting to be around different types of people, different types of personalities. So I'm the, you would say, uh, I am the quintessential extrovert. Okay. So I get energy when I'm with persons. It's important to know about yourself. And it is because you could be the opposite. There's a lot of people out there. And you wonder why something's a bad fit because it doesn't match who you are. Yeah. And there's a lot of people probably in our (sighs) business, even though they're hosts or reporters or quote unquote people, 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 persons, person, peoples, they are introverts where they, they, even though they, they report on people or, or events, they're actual introverts. So learning that about myself, um, yes, is, is important, but also shows that I'm very fulfilled when I connect with somebody, I relate in some way to them, and then I'm, I gather information from them that is enlightening, hmm. thought-provoking, intriguing to the audience, intriguing. Like, I didn't know um, Shad Khan, who I've be- grown to love over the course of the year since he was very kind to me at the Governor's Ball a year ago. I met him very briefly Um because we we his son invited me and a friend on the bus to go from the event to I think our own hotel, and so I met him in the beginning, and he remembered my name in the course of just knowing me for thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. When the event was over, we got on there, uh, you know, it was like a charter bus or whatever. He remembered my name, and he engaged with me so um, so sincerely that mm-hmm. I was that I was so. I was like, wow, he seems, at least in that moment, very caring and someone that has so much going on. They're a billionaire. Obviously, they they run a a football team and now a very successful football team. was nice to see um, he still maintained a humble attitude about it. And that quote that I brought up in the show, he was, you know, the team was a, quote, laughing stock. They were 3-13 and Mm -hmm. a year ago. And now I think, what, they finished 10-6? and They tripled their win total. Made it to the AFC Championship. They made it to the AFC Championship. Almost beat, uh, should have beat uh, the team that they played in that game. But uh, he, apparently I learned, was a dishwasher at his college. So to see how someone can grow um, from their humble beginnings, to learn that aspect about them, uh, to me is what gives me a fulfilling moment of what I do because I'm learning about all different types of personalities and challenges that they that they overcame. So our current employer notwithstanding, <laughs> would your dream job involve even spreading your wings outside the football world and bringing Absolutely. other worlds into it as well? Yes. Uh, I, one of my favorite shows to watch actually is – and I know this is going to sound. I can't even. I, I keep this very close to the vest because I realize it. That's okay. This, no one's listening to this. No one's listening. I don't tell anybody. No one's hearing took, this. But one of my favorite shows, and I don't know if it's on anymore. I haven't watched it because just time gets away from me. But it used to be Kathy Lee and Hoda. Oh, okay. And I know that that's ridiculous to say because I'm a sports fan, and the the, the you know the type of uh, demo that watches maybe a Kathy Lee and Hoda. You know, maybe aren't the same sports juggernauts that, you know, I tend to cater to. But what I liked about that show and what I like about that show is it's filled with a lot of positivity. Hmm. Um, Plus, you see chemistry between the two hosts, Kathy Lee, who's, you know, a little bit more of an older demo mixed with a Hoda who I just adore. She's Mm -hmm. just a, a just perennially positive person. Um, and, and what I like about that show is the storytelling aspect and the positive moments that you see, uh, which, of course, is not really always about sports. It's more more lifestyle. So mm-hmm. I I don't know. I, I, I like uh, I like I like lifestyle stuff. Yeah, that's not necessarily to do with sports. It is interesting uh, to backtrack for a second to hear you talk about what stood out for you with the ShotCon 
interaction mm-hmm. that he remembered your name because that's something you do really well. Mm-hmm. We'll rock, walk around the newsroom or the halls of hallowed halls of NFL Network. And you have a remarkable ability to remember people's names mm-hmm. and to say hi to them. That's an area that I'm not good, both the names and the saying hi. Mm-hmm. I think I probably still have that. Oh, they don't know who I am. I mean, you know, they're busy. They're involved with something. And you do a great job of that. And I think uh, I don't believe that's calculated. It comes across as very authentic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's interesting that you admire that in somebody like Shad Khan and that influenced your perception of him moving forward. And that's an area that you excel in. So you not want to know where I learned that from? Sure. I learned it at my very first job, getting out of college at mm-hmm. Eyewitness News. Of course, I was this little peon of a PA slash intern making barely any money getting people coffee. And one Thank day, you for the coffee, by the way. Appreciate you're welcome. That. See, Speaking there you go, still yeah, doing thanks. it. Thanks. Um, one of the things that you often remember growing up is when you're young, you're not of any person of significance. You can't get anybody a job. You're barely able to survive yourself. However, people that have the power, if they if they acknowledge you, it will make your day. So I remember specifically. Dallas Rains was our weatherman. Still mm-hmm. is, right? Channel 7 ABC. Every time he walked by me, hey, Aaron, how you doing today? And just, and like that with everybody, he would shake, I mean, and he barely knew me. He met me once. And every time he ever crossed my path, he would acknowledge me and say hi. From that moment, I remembered how wonderful it made me feel hmm. that someone who is probably the highest paid talent at that network, at the station, uh, took the time to acknowledge you because that's all we really care about, right? At the end of the day, whatever we believe in, all we really want to feel is acknowledged. Mm -hmm. Like, we just want to know that my thoughts, maybe you disagree with, are at least just validated. And you do a really good job of that, too. Oh, thanks. Where you don't always have to agree (coughs) because we can't move forward in conversations unless there is some conflict or disagreement. But at least make that person feel heard. Yeah. So um, knowing how wonderful it made me feel as an intern— Uh, And then ultimately, you know, obviously growing up and becoming talent at other like networks or stations, I always made it a point to try to, you know, familiarize myself with interns or PAs or people that I once was. Yeah. That probably just go unnoticed, unrecognized because it makes it makes their day a whole hell of a lot better if, you know, you pay attention. Well, I do think that that stuff kind of snowballs a little bit, too. Uh, It becomes contagious. But that speaks to that idea that people are much more likely, and I'm going to forget what the the cliche phrase is, but they're much more likely to remember – how you made them feel. The Maya Angelou. They don't yeah. care what you what you say or what you do, but they do care how you make them feel. Yeah, that's, I think, uh, I, love I mean, that quote. but you can apply that in a bunch of ways. I, to me, it's a big deal to remember someone's birthday. Mm. That's the oh, one yeah. day of a year. Uh, that's the one day out of every year that is supposed to be about them. Mm-hmm. And you have every right to be narcissistic and self-centered Absolutely. on your birthday. And we should celebrate people on their birthday. Uh, life is hard and it's short. So if you get a day a year to have it be about you Why and not? have people come pat you on the back and say happy birthday, I'm all for that. So I, I believe in that for that reason. Um, but even little things like I remember getting married, it was important to me to send out hand addressed mm. envelopes mm. because especially in this day and age, how often do you get a hand addressed envelope and how do you feel when you do? Yeah. You hold on to that thing and you put it somewhere special. Like that it's somebody even, took the time mm-hmm. to write my name mm-hmm. on this envelope mm-hmm. and lick the stamp, right. put it in the mail. I know. As opposed to running it through the printer. And I, I, for whatever reason, little details like that stand out to me. Uh, one piece of advice that I give to younger people that try to break into the industry buy Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, buy Bitcoin. Well, maybe not now. Do they yeah. buy it now? We always, Mark and I always discuss <clears throat> Bitcoin and how Mark always likes to maybe rub it Ethereum. in my face that I should have buy. I should have b- bought Bitcoin like three months ago when I was considering it. But I digress. Um, <laughs> one thing I always used to do, uh, at least when I was looking for jobs, was whenever I had an interview, after said interview, I would write a handwritten thank you note. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to meet me. It goes so much further than an email, in I, my opinion. Well, I, I, I think that's pr- I actually go a step further. I send of course them, you do. I send them an autographed headshot. 
Because if they want to put that on their cubicle or if they want to start auctioning it sure. off on eBay, sure. either way, it's up to them. But here they have an autographed 8x10 of me. And I think that that really goes a long way brings, toward making them feel special. Brings them joy. You know, it's I'm funny, obviously kidding, by the way. Giving uh, gifts. I had a, a the guy that actually, uh, quote unquote, discovered me in Spanish class and told me I talked too much and that there was an opportunity to do a, a, a interview for USCfootball.com is now a very successful developmental producer. He he told me one of, he produced a show and it was about like cakes or bakeries or whatever. You know how like those cooking shows are super popular. One of the companies that was uh, represented and had pitched had pitched a show to his company would bring sweet treats when they would do pitches. And so they teamed up together. So whenever they went to other networks to pitch, they would bring sweet treats because you know why? You feel endorphins when you're eating chocolate while you're getting the pitch. So now they've conditioned that when you're hearing our pitch, we make you happy. So it almost Brilliant. goes hand in hand Brilliant. with your headshot. It's yeah. like the headshot makes that person so happy they're conditioned to hire you. Wouldn't that be funny? You know? Wouldn't that be funny really if I really did do I that? If that I really did amazing. send the headshot? Just the cheesy, like that grin, you know, the headshot yes. grin that everybody in L.A. has to perfect. Oh, to ex- you can't. And, and, and it's black and white. It's not in color. It's, people don't know that there is a wall around Los Angeles. And to get in, you have to present your headshot. Yeah. It's not an ID. It's a, like a headshot. You've lived here your whole life, so you probably wouldn't know that. But, yeah, if you're driving in, if you're moving here from someplace else. You have to show them your headshot, headshot uh, at the border to get in. This is a restaurant? No, this is in Los Angeles. Oh, this is just if you want to get to LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Right, right, right. Yeah, yep. you can't move yes. here without yes. a headshot. It's an, yep. yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, that, okay, so that leads me to this next question then. <laughs> Best piece of advice anybody ever gave you, and it probably wasn't give signed headshots to people that have been, you've interviewed with. Um, that was actually the worst piece of advice someone gave me. Don't <laughs> do that. Whatever you do, do, the do opposite. not give. You know, it's so funny. <clears throat> I was just thinking about this yesterday. Um, how someone told me this when I was young and it's always stuck with me. And, uh, it's probably not the best advice, but at least it's the advice that I always think of when it comes to broadcasting, because so much of on camera reporting is obviously very visual. Mm-hmm. It's very important to to say substantial, important, very relevant uh, stuff, but it's a very visual media. So you can tell if someone looks like they're not happy, they're nervous or they're confused or whatever. You, you can tell right away because we're so uh, aware of body language. So when I was was my first job out of college in broadcasting. It was the World Series of Poker back in the day, 2008. I know there's not really a televised World Series of Poker anymore, but it used to be super popular uh, on ESPN. The guy that hired me said, whatever you say, just say it with conviction. So it, it could be in a completely different language, Mark, but just look like... You're saying it and it makes sense because the majority of people, you know, it's funny, too. We're so distracted in today's society. A lot of times people don't listen. People don't listen. They struggle to listen like what Mark's doing right now. So what were we talking about? Yeah, I knew it. Oh, you're so Set predictable. That one up. Um, that's that's interesting because that I was feel my like first piece of advice out of out of, uh, out of college. I feel like that's great advice, though, especially with what we do, because mm-hmm. we for uh, the uninformed, we get these tremendous research packets yes. before each week of NFL games, and they are loaded with stats. Yeah. And to be honest, there's there's too much to, to honestly digest. It's a lot. So yeah. you're trying to get as much of it in as, as possible and get the, the big picture mm-hmm. uh, trends. Storytelling and exactly. aspect. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of times when something will come up and you'll have a stat. Oh, I read this and it's... He averages, oh gosh, is it uh, uh, is it 4.5 yards a carry yeah. on third down or is it 4.9? Right. Ah. Right. And so I think there's a lot of time when you question yourself because you're not positive what it is. And yeah. so you don't say it with conviction. Yes. And therefore the whole thing gets watered down. When yep. in reality, what you really should just say is, look, on third down, he is effective. They're good. Right. He's getting the job done. Nine out of ten Period. times. It exactly, works. exactly. So that's great advice. But I think that counts not just in broadcasting, because if it's infected, it's it. If it is an effective means of communicating, 
Yes. On in a visual medium, it can be used elsewhere too. Exactly. If you're a teacher, if, if you you're are, a business negotiator. Exactly. If you're making a deal. Yes. If you're trying to you're trying to buy a car <laughs> and you could go elsewhere. I will not pay more than four ninety nine a month for this <laughs> Nissan Sentra. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is, and it, I thought it was really interesting, and it's funny how it's, I was thinking about it yesterday, because mm. you're absolutely right. I, not only do I apply it on aspects of my professional job, but definitely personal, too, you need to maintain some sort of confidence uh, when communicating with others. Otherwise, you know, it can get lost in the shuffle, and you lose that Nissan Sentra, and that was, your, <laughs> that was the car you wanted. It had the stick shift. Yeah. It had that sweet that, silver paint, that racing stripe. That nice, like, tiger wood on the— Oh, yeah. LED lights <laughs> underneath the car make it glow at night. Mmm. Loved it. Um, plus that six-disc CD changer in the dash. I mean, those are hard Bingo. to find these days. Yep. Uh, all right, so that's great advice. Yeah. Who is a person working today, aside from Oprah? Aside from Oprah, yeah, that you that you admire and respect and think, you know what? If I could, if I could do some of the things this person does well, or if I could, if I could take this person to lunch and pick their brain. Um, uh, aside from right, present well, company, I, that obviously, was my first uh, choice was Mark Iztuk. Yep, middle name Don. Alan. Alan. <laughs> Don's my dad's name. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Close. Um, I want to. I want to get away from the name I already said because I do absolutely admire her, and I think Oprah or Aaron Andrews, Hoda. Oh, Hoda. Yeah. I just think she's an effective communicator mm -hmm. because she does still maintain a, a sense of gravitas, which you need to have now that she's transitioned. And again, I'm not familiar if she's no longer doing the original show that she was doing on the Today Show, but she has filled in very nicely. Mm -hmm. For Matt uh, Lauer, who is no longer at the Today Show, and I think that sitting at the head of the table uh, on their premier morning TV spot, uh, morning TV hour, is not for um, the light. No, it's uh, not. Not for the faint of heart. Faint of heart. Thank you very much. Yeah. See, it took always bails me out when because we complete each other's sentences. See, see. There you go. Um, <laughs> um, but but I do I do like her because I think in many respects I uh, am similar to her, right? I think I'm super uh, relatable to these mm -hmm. quote unquote people that I wish I was their bestie. Um, but she she leads with an empathetic heart, and that is why um, she I think is such an effective communicator because you can be a tough person, but still be authentic and still care. And to me, I shouldn't have to change who I really am, which in many ways I feel as though I try to be empathetic with whoever I'm interviewing. Mm -hmm. I think that's important in making somebody comfortable because a lot of people aren't comfortable in front of a camera. So you need to, you're there with them. Yeah. I'm here for you. It's just a conversation. It's just a conversation so you can best get what you need to get out of them mm -hmm. and tell a great story. It's interesting. You've talked about some people you admire, and you you throw out Aaron Andrews' name. You mentioned Hoda. You mentioned uh, Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. All women. Yeah, I know. So that kind of leads me to ask this question: the uh, unique opportunities and challenges that being a woman in broadcasting uh, both provide and present. Uh, what do you think the biggest challenge oh. is that you have encountered? being a female and a male dominated industry. I think there's a lot more of a focus on what the woman looks like, the age of said woman, the dress of said woman. We're very much criticized uh, or judged. I've by seen your at mentions on Twitter. I've seen what yeah. people say. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's so un like, it, you know, you can go ahead and say it's unfair, but you know, maybe because I'm a woman, I've been given a bit of an opportunity too, because you know, the female sports broadcasters wasn't at the time as relevant as being a male sports broadcaster. And mm -hmm. we've many ways broken the glass ceiling in that you're you're I feel like we encourage more women to do it and it's OK. And you get, you know, hopefully at least it's starting to trend where it's more even and more equal. Um, but with that comes its own unique challenges in that, like I mentioned, you're judged based on your age. Mm -hmm. You're judged based on what you wear. And also, you're definitely judged based on what you say. So you and I could join <clears throat> NFL Blitz at the same time, and you could get a stat 
wrong and I could get a stat wrong, but the audience is way more forgiving mm. to you because you're a guy and I will be, you know, uh, criticized and judged harshly because I'm a female. It's probably because they haven't seen you throw in a spiral. They don't which know you throw a tight spiral, it by the way. Um, Impressive. But, but, so I, I think it's interesting because I think often when we collectively, and I mean we is in the general population, mm -hmm. talk about uh, opportunities and challenges for women in sports casting, broadcasting, whatever. Uh, we almost talk about it as though it's a binary. Like you'll have people who uh, are bitter about women getting opportunities and they'll say it's only because she's a pretty face. Sure. It's only because of this. She's blonde, whatever. And then you have people who will talk about the lack of opportunities when I think it's a, it's there's a double edged sword there. I do think there are opportunities. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. based on how someone looks that helped them out. And that works for guys as well. Uh, but the challenges are real and it, it feels like you're kind of addressing both aspects of it that you feel like, Hey, there are some good aspects. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fact that I didn't look like every other white guy that got the job meant I was different. I was unique. Um, but there are, I mean, like I said before, I've seen your at mentions on mm -hmm. Twitter. I've seen what people say. And I, I don't know that burden. I don't know right. having to deal with that because I'm not a woman. Yeah. That hasn't been my experience. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's it's sad. But at this point, I mean, it's just expected where there's just going to be naysayers that criticize you because they may be envious or their life isn't going well. So they need to use some type of form of scapegoat. Uh, to make themselves feel better. And at that point, you just need to, again, feel confident and comfortable in the things that you do and how you make others feel and just move forward because there's going to be critics with every career opportunity you have, whether it is broadcast or accounting or you're a lawyer. Um, it presents its own set of unique challenges. And, you know, I mean, just remember why you chose to do it in the first place. And, mm -hmm. you know, you just try to forge ahead. Well, I mean, I certainly I can look at myself and, and see times when I was guilty of of not giving uh, a woman sportscaster the credit she was due. Um, and I, I, I hope I've come to a better place since then. But I remember when I would first hear women doing play by play for mm -hmm. men's sports. And I didn't like it. Yeah. It was a different voice. I think it was really easy to trot out that really tired excuse that she's never played the sport. Mm -hmm. What is she talking sure. about? And to be honest, how many men's play-by-play -play broadcasters have played the sports right, they're talking right. about. So let's yeah. get that out of the way. Yeah. Uh, but now it just doesn't bother me anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's, I, I don't actually, have the energy. You, But you also, and it's nice <clears throat> having men like you in the business because you actually applaud it and encourage it. And we need more men like you that enjoy it now and that appreciate it because, uh, you know, what Beth Moens, right? She, I, yeah. She's fantastic. She's been doing a really great job. And uh, I think we need to see more women out there like her. Um, but we also need to see more men out there like you that applaud it, encourage it and think that uh, their time, they deserve it and nothing's wrong with it. But it is. It's it's progressing. I mean, yeah. you have to go through the process of where you're you may not make fans happy, right? I mean, when ESPN, I think it was ESPN, did that at first. I'm sure it was met with its fair share of critics. People turn the TV off. But you don't progress unless uh, you're doing something that others don't like. Yeah, I mean, I th I, I'm not going to break my arm, pat myself on the back, because I certainly look at some perspectives I used to have about that. And I'm like, eh, yeah, that was, that was dumb. I was young and stupid. And uh, the way I feel about it now is like, look, if somebody's good, Great. Mm -hmm. Get them on the air. Mm -hmm. Let them have an opportunity to work and make a living and, and uh, whatever the gender is. So hopefully we're making steps in the right direction. Hopefully it's not going to be even more about, oh, what's it like being in a male dominated industry? You know, where that question is no longer relevant. You know, that to me is I do get that often and I can't wait for the day when it's like, what's it like working in a sports industry rather than a male dominated industry. Get what I'm saying? What's it like being an offensive lineman? <laughs> yeah, right. How does it feel? <laughs> um if you had to do something else. Oh man. Broadcasting's off the table. So you get your pick of jobs and let's take all the training out of it. Like if you wanted to be an Air Force pilot, let's take out that you gotta go train and all that kind of stuff. What would if you could just pick a job, 
what would another dream job be in a completely different so field? We talk about this all the time because you and I, I think both are very interested in the aspect of real estate. Oh, yeah. Um, it's some form of you want to be a construction worker. I would love to build homes. No, um, some aspect of real estate. I do enjoy uh, like touring homes. I love mm. with my girlfriends just driving around yeah. gorgeous homes and neighborhoods and just manifesting and thinking, what would that like? What, what would that life be like? Um, but something that's completely opposite of what I'm good at. And what I what I think about all the time is interior design. Hmm. Like the, that couldn't be further from what I know I'm good at. I am terrible when it comes to like putting outfits together or fashion. But in my mind, I love it. I do enjoy it. I think it's great. Um, I'm just it's just so opposite of like my black and white personality. Huh. I don't have the creative colors that I so envy when I see like even your house is great. Oh, thank you. Um, your choice of wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> give, give, give no a lot of time work, right? a lot of time went into that yeah but um <clears throat> but i could see myself somewhere in the home renovation oh, i also really like to cook but i don't think i could ever be a chef but cooking show how about i could be a professional wine drinker Ooh, is that a profession and it if could not, be can we make it <laughs> i mean now anything's possible you could have what if you had a series on youtube you know how they've got unboxing videos for toys? Yes. That like the the most Un- watched videos quirky. on YouTube, the most the highest revenue earners are people who just open toys and talk about them. What if you had an unboxing video for wine basically? Yes. I'm going to pop the cork. Oh. Smell that bouquet? It's aspirational. <laughs> oh this my God. this is All right, let's pour the glass. Here's the sip. What what that could be a thing. It- Uncorking with Aaron. Uncorking with Costco. <laughs> Uncorked. <laughs> and then no E, just the D with the yeah, apostrophe. Yeah, apostrophe D. Yeah, yes. I like that. That's yep. good. It's good. Copyright 2018. <laughs> um, biggest obstacle you feel like you've had to overcome? Just persisting. Um, it's a daily It's a daily challenge because I feel as though in many ways I, I am too agreeable in all aspects of mm-hmm. my life where I concern myself so much with the feelings of others. And that sounds like a wonderful thing, but then you're just a real problem with anxiety Mm -hmm. because you're like, Oh, I don't want to hurt this person's feelings, but I know this to be true. And you, you just, I think the industry to, to make a better TV show or to make a better anything, you do have to bump heads. It's just the way of life. Um, so when I'm firmly, uh, entrenched in an idea that I think is the right idea, Uh, it's moving forward with that idea and being persistent when people tell you no. Mm. Um, and of course you need to compromise. I mean, that's a part of, 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 of working together with a team, but, uh, you will hear lots of no's. That's not a good idea. Or you stink or you're bad. Well, okay. Not really. You stink. You're bad. Aaron, why are you wearing that hat? Yes, oh, right. your Aaron ideas shower, are terrible. You smell. USC is right. horrible. I don't understand but it. Blah, blah, blah. Going back to what I originally said, it's just persisting. It's being, and I, young people ask me this all the time. What's the best advice you have? is you're going to hear a lot of no's. People are going to not believe in you, and you just have to keep moving forward yep. because yep. there's only one fan of Mark Iztuk, or there's only one fan of Aaron Coscarelli, and you have to be your biggest fan because no one else is going to do the hard work for you. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that persistence, like continuing to climb the hill, is the most single most important attribute. But not just for this kind of work, for anything. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I, I think if you look at anybody yes. who's achieved anything of, of great measure, it's because they continued on in spite of adversity, There's whatever a, that adversity might have been. One of my favorite shows, and I, I don't know if I was talking to you about it um, or John, but um, Comedians in Cars, cars Getting Coffee. Getting yeah, coffee. you mentioned that you like that. Will Farrell was one of his first jobs before he became a superstar was he was a bank teller. And so he used to... <laughs> Um, like recruit fan people to watch his show, like just people getting money. Hey, by the way, I'm doing this show. Here's a pe- piece of paper. Not awkward at all. And <laughs> no, not not period at in, whatsoever. In like the break room, he put up a sign of like, "Hey, I'll be at the quote unquote whatever Laugh Factory or whatever show you know local show he was doing when he first started out." And the manager grabbed the piece of paper. 
looked at it and said, this guy? Hmm, I don't think so. And walked out. And of course, he said it much funnier. But my point is, when the, in my in my opinion, one of the funniest guys on the planet, Will Ferrell, yep. is met with someone that says, you you funny, really? Come on, like, get out of here. Uh, you have to believe in yourself. Like, that's just, that that could have broken him in half, that someone, his higher, you know, his uh, his boss said to him, you funny, get out of here. Like, that's I, ridiculous. I do think that when it comes to male hosts and journalists, uh, broadcasters, that, that really you should probably quit, all of them. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Because they're not very good, no. and that should Majority really clear, out the, clear the way out. Um, no, but I, I, I think that's... Uh, I think that is excellent advice. I remember being here and I had climbed the ladder at the local affiliate, NBC affiliate in Denison, Texas, and had done everything I'd kind of everything I'd ever wanted Mm -hmm, to do mm -hmm. in local news at this one station. Mm -hmm. Weekend sports guy was the six and 10 news anchor, sports director. Mm -hmm. Aside from weather, there's not much else to do. Live shots. I mean, I I had it was a great, 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 uh, almost like a, a master's in local news reporting at this small station. So when I came out here and I'm looking for jobs and it's taking a while and it's not going the way I want it to. Right. Uh, I remember there was one point where I kept thinking, well, I'll, just, I'll move back to Texas and well, I'll, you know, at some point. And I think I realized the light bulb turned on for me that if I was willing to pack it all in and move back to Texas, I was just going to try to do there mm-hmm. what I was doing here in Los Angeles. So why even have that option on the table? It's a great it should, point. I should be completely focused on this and just continue going. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I don't know how many years I would have continued trying to fight for the kind of work that I wanted. Uh, but if you didn't take the chance to fail at what you loved, you could still fail doing what you don't love. And I knew guys, <clears throat> friends that had moved out here who were incredibly talented at whatever it was they were trying to do, who after a year or two said, you know what, this isn't for me and packed it up and moved home. And I think there were a lot of the guys are more talented, more capable. But they, but they didn't stick it out. And that's okay, that's okay mm-hmm. if you decide you want to go do something else, whatever, to each his own. Sure. But the reason it worked out or didn't work out was not because of ability. Um, it was because the opportunity didn't come up at the right time. Yeah. And had you kept knocking on the doors, maybe it would have. Yeah. And there's there's nothing wrong with some people wanting to have <coughs> uh, security in a job that – uh, you Nothing have to go absolutely. in for auditions or make a person happy based on what they wear or, or the color of their hair and where mm-hmm. you're judged on more superficial aspects. However, I will say, and it, it touches on that exact same note, there's a really interesting quote from Jim Carrey, and he talks about this a lot, actually, where his father was funnier than him, he says. Okay. But his dad was so paralyzed by the fear of failure, he became a plumber. And Jim Carrey, it affected him because he... He saw how talented his dad was, and he says tenfold more than he was, than he is. And he took away from it a really meaningful lesson as though my dad could fail to be a plumber doing something that he didn't even love. Why fail at or why at least not risk failing oh, uh, in something that you love? Because you, it's worth it's worth it. It's worth fighting for. Um so I thought that was really, really interesting because if he's saying he's funnier than uh, than Jim Carrey, he must have been a really funny guy. Yeah. I mean, I think that's it's paralyzing mm-hmm. failure. Fe- and fear is it, paralyzing. It, it, that's exactly what I mean. The fear of failure is paralyzing. And yeah. it's certainly not that I don't possess it now as well. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think there are, there are ideas I have all the time for, you know, this would be a cool TV show or this would be a cool documentary yeah. to make or this would be a cool thing yeah. to try. You know what? So much work, and what if it doesn't work out? Blah blah blah, and it just gets on the shelf, and then someone else comes along and does it. I'm like, ah, I that know, was isn't my that idea. so? And that's why it, it so goes hand in hand with persistence, because you can have a door close in front of you and he, say someone you say something detrimental to you that could break your heart, but if you don't believe solely in mm-hmm. yourself, uh, then you know no one else will. Hmm. Um, do you have ideas like that? Things that are kind of gestating that you're like, oh, this would be cool to try. This would be a lot of fun. This would. 
Yeah, I you know, I'm waiting for my opportunity to be a supermodel. I'd love to just do the catwalk at yeah, like sure. a fancy Victoria's Secret show. But okay. Do you want to do like New York Fashion Week? Yeah, I think it was a couple weeks New York ago. Fashion I think Week you has, missed out this year, but 2019. 2000 they're booking now. 25. I'll I'll be there, guys. You just, just wait. Just keep at it. You keep at it. Just wait. Uh you know, yeah, I'm sure there's opportunities. By the way, I do not want to be a supermodel. Um I wish, <laughs> but there's a lot of uh um, physical reasons why I would never be one. Um, but I do think that I have a ton of ideas. It's just like, when do you have the time to do it? There's so much to keep keep mm-hmm. up with, with just our job. By the way, I'm getting married, so that's been crazy, planning a wedding, trying not that's to... That's a full-time job. That's, that's a full-time job in yep. itself uh, that requires a lot of drinking. Like, that whole <laughs> wine aspect has really come on strong it's, as of late. The, the drinking is really the thing. That's I mean, what it's the. Yeah. That's everyone why. Everyone listening to this is going to be. get engaged. Coscarelli is a full on alcoholic. Because you then you, do, you have reasons, extra reasons to drink. Hey, we yeah. got to uh, address all these envelopes. Let's open a bottle of wine. Right. Hey, right. Uh, I got to talk about the guest list. Shall we do it over wine? Yes. Um, yes. Right. Tasting, we need there to be wine. Yeah. I'm going to need you to drink before I present this <laughs> to you because you just may need a drink. Like, I tried to tell my fiance how much um, photography was going to be, and he, mm-hmm. I think he threw up after that conversation. So just loosen him up with a little wine never He's hurts. Like, Everyone there's got iPhones. Yeah. What do we need a photographer for? <laughs> Why don't we get those uh, 99 cent uh, disposable cameras. cameras and that's what we'll do. That was awesome in 2006. Right. That was the, all the rage. You go not, to any wedding you went to, I think really between 03 and like 08. Mm-hmm. That was the cool thing to do. Disposable cameras on every table. Uh, you could present that to John and he would be full on. Yep, you're right. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's get them. 20 of them. I'll buy them. Done. Do they even make those anymore? I don't know if they even know how to uh, process the film. See, I think Apple should get on that. Make a disposable iPhone that it's just for taking pictures at events like weddings. Yeah. And then toss it. They upload to the cloud and you just throw the iPhone away. Right. Yeah. Right. I feel like I do that already with how often my iPhone breaks because I drop you it. You drop it all the time. Um, where does football rank for you in terms of your favorite sports? Is it it's Premier? Number, it's number one. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to that say that given our employer. Fishing. You know, the Ice Fishing Network uh, <laughs> premiering soon on DirecTV right? is That's people are really surreal. stoked about the launch. You're joking. It's I'm that sure. and the curling channel. It's yeah, a package deal. Yeah, yeah, the deal. curling channel. Yeah. Um, football for me, number one. Uh, let's because, see. but you played at you played sports growing up. I did. I played volleyball. I mean, I played every sport. I could bore you to death with all the sports that I played. That was just me growing up. I was such an athlete. I had so much energy. My mom's like, I can't deal with you. You get need to out, go play yeah. soccer. Get out of the house. Go somewhere. Scrape up your knee and then come back. <laughs> Um, but for me, visually watching the storylines of it, the fact that there's not that many games a season, um, baseball just, there's too many, 162 games. It's tough. I grew up such a huge baseball fan. And, and the games I, are long. Yeah. They're I become a bigger college baseball fan, actually. Really? I think, I think the college baseball postseason is, is awesome. The way they structure it, that's mm-hmm. these, you've got a four team tournament, then a two team tournament, then sure. a four team, and then a two team basically oh, to get cool. to the College World Series is pretty rad. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I just, to me, I think professional baseball is a little long. The games are long, they go in extra innings. I mean, going you know, to the game going still to the is game magical. Is fun. It's and still so magical. Is hockey. Hockey's my favorite. Actually, hockey is my favorite sport to watch live. Yeah. Um, I love the energy inside of a hockey rink. Mm-hmm. Uh, a hockey arena is just really fun. But uh, football, number one. Yeah. 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 It's uh, pretty rad to be able to talk about football every day. Uh, yeah. Beats digging ditches. In the country. Beats digging ditches. Yes, it does. Um, any final thoughts? <sighs> Are you going to play that guitar? No. You're not going to, you're not going to, you know, harmonize the, the uh, end of the interview? One, it's, it's way out of tune. Probably hasn't been played in about two or three years. Sure. Is it an electrical um, guitar? No, it's an oh. acoustic. Uh, oh, okay. And plus, I, I really. It's I'm, got a cover on it, people. I know what a guitar looks like. Let's I, just. I don't want, um, I don't want people listening to the podcast to start sending submissions and, and yeah. requests. It just you don't gets want a little, to get signed a little much, to a label. You're a busy. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't have the time to play <laughs> a 37 city yeah. tour. Yeah. Um, yeah. So sorry. No. All right. Fine. But what I will do yes. is, as every guest of the Dream Job podcast 
leaves with a parting gift. This is for you. Whoa. I'll open it up for you here. Okay. It's a fancy bottle of champagne. Whoa. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't know how fancy. The box <laughs> looks, looks fancy. The box looks fancy. You, and I believe that much like life, wow. if this champagne fakes it till it makes it, yes. it's going to taste Incredible if it is anywhere in the vicinity of how cool the box looks. Listen, if it if it just has an expensive price tag and I taste it, I automatically think it's exp- it tastes yeah, good. Yeah, this right? is this, this is, is phenomenal. This champagne is so aspirational and so ambitious. Yeah, I, the notes of you you can taste the hundred dollar bills. Yes, in Inside, the champagne, it's like marinated with ex- with expensive. Yes. Dollar bills, yeah. Gold uh, bullion. That's what I taste when I drink this wait, champagne. What you say? Gold bullion. <laughs> Gold bullion. Twenty four karat bullion. Yeah. Uh, listen, the good news is I don't know what expensive uh, champagne tastes like, so I bet you a million five hundred dollars. Yes, five hundred dollars. It'll taste like that. That's that's. I'm sticking to it. Uh, give me a sharpie. Too. I'll write five hundred dollars on the uh, box. This is very nice, guys. Hey, home. thank you for hanging out. And Thank sharing you. your story. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't think we're going to air this one, okay. so no one will hear it. Okay. Um, so we can. We can. So practice. Run. This is the. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. We'll do it over again. <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to wrap up. Uh, but oh crap! I just heard really important news. I, I don't think we have time to get it in. We'll tell you tomorrow. We'll tell you tomorrow. Yeah. Sorry, guys. So that that last bit, a bit of an inside joke between Aaron and me, it's in reference to an episode of NFL Blitz where she and I got some breaking news in our ear right as we were ending the show. No time to fit it in, so... We'll just have to tell you tomorrow. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed talking. And if you'd like to learn more about Erin or follow her on social, she's super easy to find on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can also find me there. So bring on the feedback. Uh, Also, tell your friends, please. Subscribe, listen, share, all that good stuff. Uh, Until next time, thanks for listening.